How's it going? I'm Matt Ketty from Moss Epoxies, and today we're gonna learn um, we're gonna learn proper techniques mixing epoxy resin. Before we get started, let's go over some of the materials that you'll need, the essential tools of the trade, so to speak: epoxy resin, mixing cups, stirring sticks, and optionally a power drill and a helix mixer. Keep in mind the power drill and the helix mixer are reserved for larger quantities of epoxy resin. Stay tuned towards the end of the video for some of the pitfalls that can occur with a power drill and a helix mixer. For the first example, we're going to mix by hand with a stir stick. We've tinted part B so that you can see you know, the difference between the two components, uh, but we do recommend always mixing clear and then adding pigment after. I really like this example because as you're mixing the two components together, you can see that boundary wall that we just indicated, as well as how the bottom is completely undisturbed and is untouched. So if you're just gently agitating at the surface of the epoxy, you're never going to mix the bottom of it. And then if you dump that out, you're going to have a lot of part A, the resin, just kind of floating around on your tabletop or whatever your project is, and it's not going to cure. It's going to remain soft or sticky. And that's one of the biggest culprits that we get for soft or sticky pours is not properly mixed resin or if the mix ratio is off. So if you do get a chance, check out the entire article that accompanies this video. It's on Moss Epoxies, and it's going to be the ultimate guide to mixing epoxy resin. I don't think it's going to sound like that, but it's going to be cool, and it's going to cover all the essentials that you'll need to know. For example, too, we're going to take some epoxy resin that's chilly and try to mix it up. Now, I can tell you right now, at 64 degrees, it's going to be very thick. It's going to be not enjoyable to mix, and you're going to generate a lot of bubbles. You're going to get cloudiness in it, and those micro bubbles that form when you're whipping air into it, it's going to be very, very difficult to get those to leave when you pour it out. Now, don't freak out if you did get some micro bubbles and it's less than optimal temperatures in your shop. You could take that jug of epoxy part A, make sure the cap's on good and tight, and just place it in a bucket of hot water until it warms up to, you know, maybe 70, 80 degrees. But keep in mind, the warmer that you get part A, the faster it's going to kick off and it'll reduce your working time. Did you notice the striations of the two components combining? Uh, you want to continue to stir. It's going to get cloudy before it gets clear. And a lot of times people get kind of aggressive because they're like, oh, this isn't right. And they start aggressively stirring and whipping air into it. You gotta mix a little bit more, stay patient, mix slow, scrape the sides and the bottom of the container. After about four minutes of mixing, it should be pretty clear. Now I can't stress this enough, you need to scrape the side walls and the bottom of the container. If you don't do that, you're gonna have part A or part B just kinda clinging, hanging to the side, and that's just unmixed epoxy that won't cure. It'll be a soft spot in your pour. One of the benefits of uh, using a clear container is uh, you can see inside it. We got some epoxy sticking to the sidewalls. We can still get a couple views of some striations. They can get confusing at this point though. The bubbles will smear and they'll end up looking like striations. But now, as I'm mixing this one, I get a little bit aggressive and I'm trying to induce air into the mixture so you can see micro bubbles. And then at the end, you can see how they don't really rise to the surface. So you can let it sit there, but they're pretty much trapped in because they don't have the density to rise up and come out because the temperature of the epoxy was kind of cold. So what's the takeaway from this? If you start mixing it and you just lose your mind, you become this crazed stirrer, just feverishly whipping air into it with relentless aggression, <laughs> you're gonna get bubbles and it's gonna be really hard to get those out of there. What you could try to do is pour a really thin layer and then add heat to it and then apply a torch to it, but chances are if you got bubbles like this, they're gonna be trapped in your pour. Example three is optimal conditions. So, you know, 75 degrees, easy to mix, clear finish, minimal bubbles. It's actually a funny story behind this. So we shot this like six different ways and I kept making Derek lean over top of the table and then it was like crushing his back. So I was like, oh dude, we gotta do it right here. I could have very easily changed the camera position, but I just made it living hell for him. If you get a chance, email him. It's Derek at epoxy.com and say, hey man, thanks for wrecking your back. I enjoyed that mixing video. He'll know what you're talking about. Last but not least, example four, power drill with the helix paddle bit. So this is either gonna be your best friend or just a nightmare that haunts you for eternity. Uh, <laughs> not really, just take it easy. Mix it slow, don't go crazy with the speed. You know, move it around up and down, just kind of pay attention to the bubbles forming. If you start really getting wild and whipping air into it, there's no recovery. So if you turn it frothy white like we have here at the end, 
um, that epoxy shot you know it's gonna be white like that now if you have a heavy pigment or a mica powder or something like that a lot of times you can hide that it's not a big deal but if you're doing a clear pour over a tabletop or over some kind of artwork um, we don't advise using a drill all right, let's recap. What did we learn today? One, don't be a maniac and whip air into your epoxy. <laughs> Two, scrape the sidewalls and the bottom of your container to ensure you have all part A and part B mixed together in solution. Three, make sure your air temperatures are optimal. You know, 70, 75, the warmer it is, the easier it's gonna be to mix, the easier it's gonna be to release bubbles. And four, sometimes we abuse Derek when we're shooting these videos and it is awesome. That about wraps it up for us, guys. I, as always, thank you for checking out our videos. And if you have any questions, comments, or you want us to create some videos because you know we're lacking information or you just want a bigger knowledge base, let us know. We'd love to do it. Have a good one. Talk to you later.